Welcome to Big Games, Small Pieces. I'm Luke, and this is... Mitch. And this episode <laughs> is proudly brought to you by Podiums. Now that is a product I can get behind. So in this one, we're going to discuss uh, the problem with monks. Mitch, is there a problem with monks? Not anymore. <laughs> we fixed it. Our, our saviour, Tasha, is the new patron saint of all monks as she's coming to save the day. And we'll yep. be discussing all of that and more. Right, so I guess we're going to start with how monks came about. Um, monks were um, brought in in dribs and drabs. Monks have had uh, a lot of what it requires to become a monk in the early days of uh, D&D and AD and And it took a lot of high stats to actually get a monk, and then you didn't get a lot out of them. Third Ed came around and they started to try and do what they could and then 3.5, I believe, polished it off a little better. Uh, fourth Ed, I don't think Monks uh, got a good run. I, I avoided Fourth Ed. And then Fifth Ed, they've come back in again and I think they're a little weak. I don't think they can hold their mustard compared to some of the other classes, depending on what you see a Monk's role is. A more spiritualised warrior. Uh, you could say they're unarmoured, but there's plenty of martial arts that have weapons and monks can use weapons so you can't just say that they're unarmed people that is a, a way to go but um they're potentially a a warrior that's also has a spiritual side to it they, they use an internal energy which in this game they've utilized as key um so i think going with knowing all that it's time to start talking about what problems do we have with monks uh martial art dice too low and don't advance quick enough yeah, the monk starts off with his martial arts dice of a D4, and I really feel, why am I even using these things when I should just be picking up a stick and whacking people with that one? <laughs> I, got a D3, I get a D8 immediately, so what, why aren't I using that uh, instead of a D4? So I, I think that should be increased at least to a D6 to start with, and yep. then it gets up to a D10 at level 17. Yep. It's a D8 at level 11. That's a D6 at level 5. I'd increase all that to come a little closer to the third edition, where eventually you got up to a D20. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily do that, but I think, was it level 11, you're getting a D8? A fighter can do that at level one and have a shield. But... Oh, no, I understand. I, I agree with that. And I was against that because I thought making the monk all about damage takes away from the fact I love the concept behind the monk, the role play, the balance of movement, strength, agility. But now you've said that, I'm going to rechange and I want them to move them up just a little bit, just incrementally. Give it a few turns to the right with the notch. And uh, yeah, they should get up to a D12 because I never get to use that dice and I have a lot of them. And like they could start monk marketing or monketing. Uh, yes, I did it. But monketing uh, monk dice, just all D12s. Oh, maybe. Yeah, like it could be a unique thing. Like who else rolls a D12? Tell me a class. Tell me a class. Barbarians. Yeah, shut up. Uh, <laughs> no, but you're, yeah, no, but you're correct. Uh, barbarians and fighters, I guess, if they have a big enough great axe, I guess. Um, a monk needs a lot of good stats. It needs wisdom. It needs dex. And if it's Malia, it's going to need con as well. That's three stats that it can't have bad, at least. So I would say, you know, your wisdom at 16, your dex at 16, your con is going to have to be 14. Yep. And then as you go up levels, you've got to raise two stats simultaneously to maintain good armor class, good damage, and good attacks. I think the monk could be refocused, and this goes into the, the following point, Attack with wisdom. Yep. How do you feel about the, man, the amount of stats we're going to manage there? I like it, apart from pigeonholing all monks into doing that, because I'm a big fan. Like, I actually wouldn't... The way I'd address this would, would be I'd allow them to have both unarmoured defence, like a choice. The one that the barbarians have, which is dex and con, or dex and wisdom. Both make sense. One is, as you pointed out off camera, the monk that hones his body so he can get kicked in the testicles repeatedly without flinching. 
Cause that's damage reduction right there. All right, um, I guess another one is to reconsider is this is a frontline fighter who's used to sparring and punching them to each other all day long. A D8 is a low amount for a or a fighter. Now, I know third ed, they come from a D8, but they're right down there. Are you telling me that uh, just sitting there punching each other all day as you train is any worse than a paladin who's spending time focusing on his casting, his divinity, his, his other such? Um, I think we could potentially even bump that up if we feel that uh, that's not st that's what's holding the monk back, the hit points. Actually, I, I agree with that, and I'm going to put it out there that uh, Wizards of the Coast literally have just gone, everyone, monks are tiny, frail guys that just dodge out of the way all the time. And that's how they're yeah. playing it. And I was like, well, I'm pretty sure that like if you went to the monastery, there'd be like, you know, 40 people. Huh, 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 huh. And over in the corner, you'd see this fat guy just eating rice. Like, <laughs> that'd be me if I went to the monastery. Did I'm, yeah, I'll be with you in a sec, boys. <laughs> yeah, monks are good. But, like, I'm sure there's monks out there that are, like, big, hulky guys that are actually training every day, just lifting weights, not focusing on their chi. Like, a little bit. But, you know... Go into your strengths. If you're a six foot eight giant guy, sumo might be for you. Sumo might be for you. And like, hey, yeah, I'm still using my chi. I'm just e hondering it a bit. Here's yeah. also going to AC. Um, a monk gets his wisdom and his dex bonus in AC. And yep. I think potentially to keep up with the growth of characters at certain rates, that probably needs to be increased. I mean, we could be talking instead of a wisdom bonus, you could be one and a half wisdom bonus or two, up to two times wisdom bonus, depending on what level and how high you get up to. That would help keep up with enchanted armor um, and any other magical items and, and, and abilities that the group get, like parries and uh, other resistances. I disagree, but only on the fact that um, I know how... I'm planning to build my monk. And if you treat uh, his patient defense, which is quite easily to be used, you can use it normally as a dodge, but his patient defense, bonus action, disadvantage on attacks, that's basically, numerically, it's like a plus five to his AC. Yeah. So if he has a multi-class that gives him extra or someone gives him another spell that gives him extra AC, and then he has... 20 wisdom, 20 dex, and this is the top end of things. That is true. That's, that's 20, then plus 5 for his unarmored yeah. defense. That's, that's getting scary kind of ACs. Like, that's top end of 5th edition. Like, no one can beat that. That it's, is up there. It's definitely and up there. But to give him up. 2 times wisdom or even 1.5, like 1 1.5, I just, I have no issue with it. It just feels a bit messy. But if you went up to 2, it'd just be too big too big there are builds for fighters and paladins for going super ac and they're there to give them those big advantages those big numbers yeah. um potentially it could even raise like in the old one you used to get extra bonus when you get to level like 12 or whatever you get a plus one to your ac because your wisdom stat just can't increase at the same rate and that yeah. would be one way of controlling it. so potentially just just listed bonuses level eight you get another plus one level 12 you get another plus one and then or so forth wherever wherever it needs to sit gameplay and testing It'd be interesting. I think involving con in the AC could help because um, that's basically the same as giving two wisdom, but it's much more unlikely that someone will get 20 in wisdom, exactly. con, exactly. and dex. So get, making it con, dex, and wisdom would be interesting, but I think it'd be a little bit too overpowered once you take into account his dodging and his versatility to get out of combat. Your argument about having... Um... 20 wisdom, 20 dex. How did you get that many points? I cheated. Dungeon Master wasn't looking. Yeah, I rolled yeah, 18s. That's, that's a lot of stat raises to, to get that. And I, I think that you'd have to start off with, with rolling for starters. You'd have to start off by getting 17s uh, sort of thing to get your stat bonuses to actually get to a point where you could make them that high together um, within a reasonable time where you're not becoming level, you know, by the time you hit level 18, you can do this. Well, that's, that's too long. Campaigns don't last that long. So the next thing um, we've talked about a few things is um, I feel key. Key is a very limiting factor in the month and they don't get a lot of it. 
uh, particularly in early days where some of their blasts can use their whole key. So it's like a wizard just walking in, yep. casting his one spell and then he's done. So I think a pool to begin with, and it could be two, it could be four, it could be six, eight, whatever you sort of whereabouts you're playing your game. But yep. upping their initial key and then increasing it after that as levels go on, I think is something that would give the monk a lot more abilities. They could, they could have more attempts at that stunning fist that doesn't always go through. They would have more attempts at uh, some of the extra trips and abilities and larger things that they don't get to go up until they're much higher level. So would you also increase it from a short rest to a long rest? Or would you keep it like the fighter, like martial class, sort of short rest recovery? To well, get potentially they get half key back at uh, short rest. Uh, so it's once again, sitting down and game balancing and testing the thing out. Uh, if you gave people like six more key points to begin with at level two, you might only say and you only get half key at a rest, not your full key back again, which yep. gives you a bit more. But once again, it, it, it just allows that pool to start off at the start of the day. You don't lose everything on one attack. Yeah, the, uh, I think they've addressed this really well on the new subclasses. I won't get into it yet. I think this is a problem of the past classes. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know the four elements monk needs to be reskinned, re zoned or thrown in the bin or something because I'm pretty sure that that subclass was designed by someone under duress. They're saying, no, I don't, I don't want to create the new, I don't want to make Avatar because Avatar's great, man. Look at his picture. Look at, he's got a forehead thing. Yep. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to do it. He goes, yeah. He goes, fine, I'll do it. All right. If you mm -hmm. want to make a little bit of fire in your hand, even though you like control the elements, 14 key points. <laughs> That's what you get. Your little uh, the next points, I think, go together, these two. Um, so... You've got no disarm and trip mm. and grapple feels like it's missing something. I think they should be combined. Uh, I, I would love to see uh, the grappling like in combat fighting while grappling become a monk thing. I would love to see that. So like not so much wrestling like the grappling uh feet once you grapple them while grappled you have advantage on attacks against people and while they are grappled you can use your action to try and pin them or restrain them great that's fantastic what about while grappled take their weapon yeah. Yeah, while grappled trip them over while grappled you know, hit a pressure point and go for something. Like, it feels like something the monk can do. Like, I've seen Jet Li do it. Is he monk? He's kind of monk. He's going to be monk. Jackie Chan, Jet Li. There, there are so many that you watch their fights and you think, that's what I want to do. That is cool. John Wick, even. He yeah. ties people up and gets and, and uses a range weapon as a melee weapon to uh, thump people down. Actually, I really like that. Now, I want to play the Jackie Chan from Shanghai Noon in mm. a cowboy one. So, like, have the hat and a horseshoe on a rope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yep. I'm in, I'm in. Like that goes in. That goes in a monk weapons that are missing, but we haven't really got uh, that one. But uh, yeah, I do feel there, there is an ability. To, uh, in third ed, everyone can make a disarm trip or grapple attempt, and that, would, that was generally done pretty balanced. You had to actually take feats to make it better. But a yep. monk <clears throat> doesn't even have a subclass. I mean, way of the open hand. Let's say I'm, I'm some monk living in a village and the samurai come down and come to attack. I've got no way of taking the sword off the guy, even when I've got him wrapped up and wrapped all around my jacket or around whatever, or I've, I've got him tied around a shoelace and things like that, or caught up in a ladder. I still can't take the weapon off him. And I think I, there's something there, particularly with open hand or a class much like him. Um, so I think that's sort of... And you said monk is not about skills anymore? Yes. Now, back in third ed, fighters only had like four skills, like climb, swim, jump, uh, ride. No, very limited. Yep. Now, everyone gets a big mix of skills. Whereas Monk had like a medium mix of skills probably, to show that they weren't just about fighting. They had other things. They've taken that away from the Monk and shown that like, well, 
we get just as many skill points now as everyone else generally does, being about four. Um, monks aren't about skills and doing that yep. anymore. They aren't about having knowledge and things like that because they've got to put all their skill points into knowledge and insight and, and all those mystical things and they've got nothing left for the other things like anything combat or climb or such related. Yeah, so potentially giving them another skill will also show that they're not there just to fight. They're there for other things. Yeah, I would actually agree with this. Um, they have addressed this once again in Tasha's. This is what I'm saying. Like Tasha's patron saint of the monks. Yeah. Uh, before we go into Tasha's, there's uh, potentially monk weapons could be fleshed out a bit more. Um, mm -hmm. What do Nunchuck do? What do um, uh, um, Shigetsu Shogays? What do uh, all the different uh, moon blades and all the different uh, weapons do? But they also come with things like pinning abilities and entrapments and uh, so forth. Um, what does Sai do? Sai are made for catching and trapping swords. So, uh, there are a number of uh, monk weapons that were meant to do things like this. And potentially they could be fleshed out in an expansion book where it just simply says, like, uh, yeah, monks get short swords because that was the Wakazashi. Yeah, yeah monks get uh, long swords as well because that was the... Um, that was uh, their, their sword. They, they, these weapons are monk weapons. Uh, without even having to worry too much about that. And some of the fancy ninja ones is what people see in movies. Like, whoa, they were cool. Like, who doesn't want to use nunchuck and things like that around the fight? And a nunchuck's got to at least do club damage considering it's articulating. It usually does more than it. anything that articulates will do more than that. Then throw in there some of the chains. And as you said, Jackie Chan with a horseshoe spinning it around much like uh, a... Um, uh, what do they call those weapon systems? It's a little bit like the end of the Kigetsu Shoge or the yep. um, uh, 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 can, can I? No, not can I? Um, yeah, there's a lot of martial arts. I know the ones, but we all know they're lo loosely based off the movie Shanghai Noon with Jackie Chan. He invented <laughs> that weapon. I'm pretty sure. Um, but no, it's it definitely needs to be fleshed out. I do love the idea of like having three or four subsets of monk weapons where they have. So instead of having, uh, instead of having know, a full range, yeah, maybe you select a few, and they're your ones. Well, if you if you got no weapons out, you've got the deflect, or if you got one hand free, you've got the deflect ar uh, missile, and catch mm -hmm. and throw. If you got two things, you can parry an attack. If you got this, that'd be really cool. I really like that idea. I think all of those problems uh, have been brought up by, uh, not all of them, but most of them been brought up by people time and time again. Uh, it seems like the monk is a much loved class, um, apart from me, circa 2019 or early 2020, before Tash's, pre Tash. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> this year is 0001 AT. <laughs> ATG. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, there's some things you want to talk about, Tash's. Uh, yeah, Tash's. You've been going through this book. I've only just got it recently, so I'm less familiar than you are. But you've really got some things you want to uh, drum home about how you think Tashes has fixed or improved monks greatly. The new monks that have come out this time, I've never, like, never in my life have I been this keen to play a character. And I literally cannot decide which one I'm going to play. I think I'm going to play as I get to level three, I'm going to make the decision. Uh, these, whoever designed these monks deserves a pat on the back because... They are so true to what I, as soon as I read it, I could picture the monk. I could start developing the character straight away in my own unique way. Um, but yeah, of course, I'm talking about the way of mercy and the way of astral, the astral self. Both are just fantastic. One, I love the uh, visual imagery of being able to use hand of harm or uh, hand of healing. <laughs> Basically, you know, they've got a cut here and blood's flowing out. You pop that and stop the blood flow a bit or pop it back in, bit of healing hand, hand glow green. Like you could visually create this and just have a ball of a time saying the way you do it. You know, give someone a good slap on the face to heal them. I love that That's idea. The story of this type of monk who can run up and hit pressure points and make you feel better or feel worse is been all through the law, been through movies, been through all sorts of things. Whether it be through the use of uh, acupuncture needles or just knowing points and striking certain things, even the uh, Kill Bill five finger um, 
five point death touch or whatever it was. It's those sort of abilities that uh, are strong in the moment. And I like the idea of a class that's finally um, doing something a little along the lines of this. Uh, I potentially wouldn't have mind, I uh, know all monks can, uh, can strike and can freeze people up. But yep. also, potentially, there's some other things that could have been done as well, such as strike certain things, and then they can't use their right or left arm, which now means they can't use their sword or shield effectively. But you can't go too powerful with the class. So, uh, yeah, that monk's amazing. I'll go straight down to the Astral Self. I yep. love this one so much now. Like, I love the Way of Mercy up until the point I read this one, and then I threw Way of Mercy in the bin because this one just has everything you need. So it has, as we spoke of before, um, I'll go from the start. Basically, you find your astral self. You found your body outside your body, your true form, representative of your key, all that stuff. Uh, at third level, you're able to summon part of your astral self, uh, your astral arms, and they basically come out and they can either be attached, like coming out of your arms or just out of your back or however you want to do it. And for 10 minutes, you have them. While you have those arms out, you can use your wisdom modifier instead of your strength uh, instead of your strength modifier for strength checks and saving throws. So grappling, which is amazing. Uh, you can use mm -hmm. them for unarmed strikes. So now you're using wisdom modifier. So now you don't need decks that much for that if you don't want it. Uh, when you're making arm strikes with arms with the arms on your turn, your reach is increased to five feet, greater than normal. So bugbears, I'm looking at you. Then, so you get your arms out. The next part is the head. You get the visage. It comes out. You spend one key point to summon that visage and you get all these. So once again, one key. So for two key points, you get all these abilities. Um, so it covers your face. Uh, you get all at once 120 dark vision through both magical and non-magical. So devil sight, but it's called astral sight because it's much cooler. Yep. Well, I'll get that. Yep. Uh, but yeah, now you don't have to do that. Uh, you get advantage on wisdom, insight, and intimidation. Charisma intimidation. And this is my favorite one because I wanted to make a bard with this as well. Or a drunk barbarian. This is how I'm doing it. Word of the spirit. When you speak, you can direct your words to a creature of your choice that you can see within 60 feet. So only that creature can hear you. And this is my favorite part. Alternatively... You can amplify your voice so all creatures within 600 feet can hear you. Bar karaoke. The whole block. The whole block. Like you're singing. I'm going to get drunk and sing in the castle. It only lasts for 10 minutes though. So I'll need to use a few key points to get through my whole repertoire of karaoke and annoy the DM. Okay. So um, ways attached to save the monks. So we've got two amazing subclasses. That's great. Um, custom lineage, which is bloody awesome. It gets us out of having to do the human variant to get a feat because the feats are amazing now. Uh, so you've got custom lineage plus two ability. So you throw it on wisdom or decks and a feat, which you Whoa. take Fey touched, which is a new thing in Tashes as well and get the hunter's mark for an extra D6 damage every hit or hex for disadvantage on strength checks for them and D6 damage on hits for use with your Astral Monk while you've got advantage. At third level, you're going to really grapple some people. Pause. Racial Origin Manager for the min-maxes out there is fantastic. You've got plus two to two things and like nine proficiencies. And if you're like me, get rid of the languages as well because if you go on Astral Monk or you know one of the warlocks that can talk telepathically, Get rid of common because it's a hilarious way to start the game with just drawing stuff with your painting supplies to communicate to everyone and annoys the shit out of the table. But it makes me laugh. Um, there, then you've got all the feats that have come out. So you've got fighting initiate, which allows mm -hmm. you to take unarmed, which yep. means that you can now have D8 plus your wisdom modifier or your dex modifier as your level one attack for a monk. When you get to level two, you now go first attack, then flurry a blow. So three attacks, three D eight plus three or four or something damage. That's ridiculous. Like that is that overpowered. A... But with the, this, my favorite feat for the monk would have to be crusher. Mm. Like 
once per turn when you punch someone with and deal blood bludgeoning or oh, when you deal bludgeoning damage you can knock them back five feet so sure. if someone told me like mitch we're starting the campaign we're going to start here and we'll let you take one additional feet i'd go thank you very much are we starting the town are we and they go yeah and i go great and I write down, we're definitely starting in a bloody tavern. I'm taking tavern brawler and I'm taking crusher. And I'm going to hit someone with a pool cue and knock them five foot over the bar into the drinks at the back. Tasha's guide actually came out fighting for the rest of the monk classes, but unfortunately they were too heavy. But they did give a whole heap of optional class features, which people can read in their own time, where you can now use weapons, use your key points for healing, and reroll a missed attacks or add to your attack roll. But not enough they need to fix it's internal fixes like key point costs for some of them and some of them just have no flavor uh we'll move on so give me the top win for tashes and the top fail of the monks a uh, a good win on tashes would probably be uh, the astral monk i myself am in, more interested probably in an astral monk than a way of mercy the, the idea of uh playing a monk that's uh, in potentially missing a limb and have it uh, come back spiritually. It is a little bit more intriguing to me for a, a role play perspective. And as for a uh, failure point on the monk, I think um, having themselves split over too many stats to keep up with some of the other classes probably needs to be reviewed. And as I said, potentially look at using wisdom for most of their uh, actions. Uh, for the, uh, the big win, I'm going to say the uh, custom origin. Like mm -hmm. I can't, the custom lineage of Tasha's is the biggest win we've had in a long time. Uh, having that feat and a plus two is a min max's dream. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. But I also love the concept of not pigeonholing people into races. So being able to mix around the things I love the idea of a weak orc. I love the idea of a strong gnome. Like, I love those concepts. That's what really drives me. Uh, the biggest fail for the monks is, as we spoke about grappling, uh, the inability to be able to do anything meaningful with your martial arts, apart from hit stuff, I feel sort of takes away from what martial arts is. It's meant to be about protecting people. It, it's not just hitting people with a hammer until they die. A lot of it's disarmed, dissuade, you know, bring it down. So mm -hmm. I think giving the monk more abilities to disarm or potentially stop an attack on someone else would be amazing. If anyone does have any really good like homemade feats for grappling, I'd love to see one with a, you say, I'm doing a, I'm going to grapple you to do this. And you do a, basically a strength check DC. I'd love to see, like, you must beat their strength check or their dex check or something by at least seven to be able to strip their belt off and tie it around their neck for ple sexual pleasure. Like, you, you've got to... If anyone's got any good feats, just link it to us because I want to use them. I'm not going to share it to anyone. I won't share our secrets. It'll be between you and me. <laughs> yeah, us. You, you and us. It's a special bond. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to the first episode of this. We plan on doing a number of these where we discuss anything from classes to game systems to styles to just anything we think about uh, certain uh, concepts in the game. Uh, we will potentially dip out of D and D on occasions and look at other uh, game systems. And um, hopefully, we'll uh, keep them doing this and we'll keep enjoying uh, talking about D and D together. Ah, I don't think there's any risk of that stopping. But yeah, I'm sorry. I, I think the kids are awake, man. I'm going to have to go. Kids are awake? All right, man. Catch you later. Uh, see you, man. Mods game hack for this week because I love min-maxing and also just role-playing funny stuff. But Take your custom lineage, and as the feat, take Dwarven Fortitude. 
No mm -hmm. one ever uses it and it's a fantastic feat. It also custos, covers the custom lineage. Hey, I'm coming from this sort of, you could, it sort of sets it up for you already. And every time you take the dodge action, you can heal yourself a little bit, which is fantastic. It's buffing your AC while giving yourself a little heal. Early levels can come in handy. And once your mm -hmm. AC gets up, it's giving you a uh, plus five to your AC for the entirety of your, until your next turn while giving you health back. You're 